walk into Tiananmen Square in April 1989 by coincidence. It was purely for curiosity and then just uh, start talking with people and they cannot get out of the square. And uh, I think it's uh, gradually, little by little, you start talking to people, especially when I was lit listening to the students' public speeches and they were intellectuals. Um, they were so good speeches and uh, I was so much inspired. Then start conversation with the others, little bit by little bit, building my own kind of a, a dream. It's not a dream, but just some kind of a imagination. It was not really that clear. So later on, uh, I involved this uh, workers' organization. In late May, I heard the workers' uh, organization was uh, organized in the corner of Tiananmen Square. So I just uh, went there and joined them. Later, um, I, we were running for the election, so I was elected as uh, the sp spokesperson. I was a worker, I was a railway worker working on a train, electrician, so it's naturally, I just saw the organization just to join. And, uh, um, but uh, after more people joined in that organization and we tried to make it more formal, like uh, we tried to organize an election for a committee, and uh, the committee you have different uh, uh, what, uh, duties in the committee. So that's uh, being more uh, systematic. But still, starting from the 19th of May, this organization, uh, the crackdown happened June 4th, and we only survived for uh, two weeks. So it's uh, no way to make a complete strategy and uh, the development of uh, the, the, the organization structure. The first um, confrontational thing was April 26th, the People's Daily Editorial. Uh, they decided, uh, they set the tone that the students movement was uh, chaos, um, the element of unrest. Uh, so there, at that time there were no workers involvement and uh, uh, the government declared martial law the 19th of uh, May. There were no workers organization set up, although there were a lot of uh, workers in Beijing supporting the students in the street and uh, donating money, sending food to Tiananmen Square, but there was no really clear organization. And the workers' organization was uh, organized and set up exactly right after, a few hours after the government declared uh, martial law. People were getting more excited. And uh, because uh, everything peaceful, the government uh, did not do much, and also the police disappeared for a few weeks, and Beijing City was in peace. Even the criminal activities, stealing, uh, you know, in a bus, it uh, becomes zero. So uh, people feel angry. Why you don't? I mean, as government, instead of a response to the students' request uh, for dialogue, you put out martial law. That was the worst decision they made. They made it further uh, to the corner, actually put everybody further to the corner, and especially the government itself. So uh, that's why um, when the martial law declared probably a few hours of fear, and then the next day, and the next day, and the next day, more people coming into the street. And again, people are more feeling to, to stay there, because uh, this government further lost uh, legitimacy by declare this martial law. The last uh, few days in May and the beginning of June, people keep talking about uh, tonight the army will break in for whatever the cost. It never happened, I never believe. Until the late evening on June 3rd, and people said to me, tonight we have very clear information that the army will break in for whatever the cost, that's for sure. That's the end of everything. 
um, I still don't believe because um, I just told people, I said, please, I served in the Army for three years. We were told our ultimate goal is serving people. I can't believe any soldier will shoot people, even there is a, a clear order. Um, I said to them, if I am a soldier, I get this order, I would rather shoot myself than shoot people in the street. So I feel absolutely uh, comfortable about my feeling. And, uh, that's why I want to sleep uh, before they start shooting. So people woke me up and they told me they start shooting. And I heard the bullets, the voice outside the tent, and I thought, oh, it must be training bullets. It's uh, you know, this kind of empty bullets and nothing coming out. And uh, But when I came out from the tent, look up into the sky, and that's real bullet. And I had no idea. Uh, people asked me, what can we do? So the only thing I could say was, uh, I don't know, let's wait. I have never thought they will send uh, soldiers uh, with guns shooting people with the real bullet. I thought the worst of the worst it could be they come in uh, with uh, the guns as a symbolic, uh, scaring people, and most probably some training bullets, the empty ones, and only making uh, the noise, not really the bullets coming out. Even I wasn't thinking about uh, the rubber bullets. And uh, most likely, I thought uh, they will use uh, the wooden stake coming in and uh, beating us up. That's what I was telling people. I said, let's get ready. Probably we will get breaking head, bleeding, and uh, broken legs and arms. So that's uh, what we should prepare for. So I never thought they were really shooting bullets into people's heads and people's chests. There were a group of uh, young people came into our tent, ten something. They looked for me, and I said, "This is Han Dongfang." They said, uh, um, "We are here to take you out of the square. You have to leave tonight. There will be a lot of people killed um, in the square. Uh, you have to leave." And I said, uh, "No. Why I have to leave?" I have to stay. And I say, no, you have to leave. We want you to survive. We want you to play the role in the future. So therefore, you shouldn't die here. That's not your destiny. And we argued a little bit. So they just uh, said, there's no more time left. And you have to go. So they just pick me up, walk me out of the square. And uh, I remember the guy who was leading this group said, um, let's walk as a circle, surround him in case the bullets will hurt him. And I remember that, and the bullet in the sky, very clear as if it was happening last night. So that's how I get out of the square. I was planning to uh, take two years uh, trip on my bike around the country and everywhere um, to have better understanding about my country and the people's life, farmers and workers and everywhere. Although I had already traveling around the country on the train, but uh, only knows the country geographically, but not really in people's life. So that's what my plan was after this group of people brought me out of the square. But one day I saw my picture in the TV uh, in the middle of the traveling. And I had no fear, actually, at that time. I was talking to people what happened in Beijing until I saw my picture. And I thought, oh my god, this is, this is it. I did not know that could be that serious. Um, it's kind of naive, and it was killing in a square, but you still don't believe it's that serious. It's kind of a strange, but it's a reality. And, uh, the first thing came into my mind was the speech I delivered.
during the election. And I said, uh, what we're doing is absolutely legal. So if one day um, we need to go to the prison, so I'll be the first one walking into prison. I don't need the police to catch me. So giving this speech in order to make people feel comfortable to vote for me. So they did. I became the spokesperson of the organization. So now I saw my picture and what I should do. They're looking for me. Should I do what I said, walking into prison or escape? Um, it was not an easy decision. I spent a few hours to make that decision. So I thought uh, if I run away, and that means I will be running away permanently from the future, any political possible involvement in this country. Because one day, if we have a democratic system, if I'm running for election, uh, giving a speech, and if someone listening to my speech, as same as many years ago in the square, and they will jump up and say, Mr. Han, you swallowed your promise. How can we believe in today you speak? Um, or I just do what I said and walk into prison and end up this way. Finally, I thought, okay, it's not a bad ending. So I decided to be on my bike back to Beijing, walk into uh, the police. So at the end, it was uh, a right decision.